Welcome back to Creative Excuses. After a year of waiting, the Infinite Archive is finally here, and it is a doozy. You can spend hours and hours in there on just one run, which can be a bit much, honestly, if your build is boring. So today, I'm gonna show you my new favorite build for the Archive so far. My adapted Arcane Archer, redubbed the Infinite Archer. This build has been with me for over three years, and it has seen many, many versions but this new version is the tankiest it has ever been, making it perfect for the Archive, and, if you saw my last video, even able to solo some veteran DLC dungeons, which is just absurd. So, let's jump in and see how this build solves some of the problems of the Infinite Archive. If you just want the build with the gear, traits, enchants, and all that jazz, check out the link in the description to the written guide over on ESO Hub. Let's jump into it. Remember, around here, we look at problems and solutions because builds in ESO are always designed to address specific gameplay challenges. So what are those challenges in the Infinite Archive? There are obviously the normal problems when soloing. You've got damage, sustain, and damage reduction. But those, those are boring compared to the real problem in the Archive. Random number generation, also known as RNG, also known as luck, or if it's a crown crate, gambling. The Infinite Archive has RNG all over the place with randomness deciding the bosses you fight, the marauders you fight, the verses you can choose from, and the visions you can choose from. The problems of damage sustain and damage reduction can all be helped or hindered by your luck with visions and verses. So we have to think about how our builds can use these to our advantage. But there are a few unique problems that these visions, especially the run long buffs that you get from beating bosses, can create. The first problem these visions create is the stat problem. Which stats are available as visions? And which stats are the most valuable and important to bring to the archive? If you take a look at a list of all the available visions, found on some websites, maybe buried in the forum somewhere, or just from your own experience in the archive, you'll find that many of the offensive and defensive vision options provide a particular kind of stat. Percentage damage increases and percentage damage reductions. These are awesome, but there are also some stats missing from the vision and verse options, like raw stats, weapon and spell damage, and most importantly, armor. There are no visions that provide a buff to your armor. This is incredibly important to know when building because it means whatever armor you bring into the archive is what you're stuck with. Armor will not grow with you as you build out an arsenal of visions, which matters because incoming damage in the archive scales rapidly on the trash pack fights especially, and the Thoat boss fights. For that reason, the math on how armor and percentage reductions interact is important to go over. We're gonna get really nerdy here for a minute. There is a big debate in the community about whether or not increasing armor values has increasing returns the higher your armor is. I'm not here to settle the debate because the two sides are arguing from different perspectives. Instead, I just want to explain what is happening and why bringing as much armor as possible to the Archive is so important. So here we go. Damage reduction in ESO follows a multiplicative formula, so percentage reductions have decreasing returns. If the original hit is going to be 1000 damage and you have two independent 10% reductions, the first one in the formula will reduce that hit to 900, which is a 100 damage reduction. But the second will only provide 90 damage reduction, because it's 10% of 900, not 10% of 1,000. As math, it would look like this. Damage taken equals 1,000, which is our base damage, times 1 minus 0.1 times 1 minus 0.1. Remember, those percentage reductions are negative numbers from 100% damage taken, hence the subtraction. So damage taken equals 1,000 times 0.9 times 0.9 equals 810 which is a 19% reduction from 1,000, not a 20% reduction, which would be the case if the 10% mitigations were additive. Why is this important? Because armor increases are not multiplicative. In this damage taken formula, adding additional percentage reductions onto the end of the multiplication does not result in a clean 5% or 10% reduction from the original value. They have diminishing returns, but increasing your armor value is not adding additional percentage reductions onto the end of the formula. Adding armor makes one of those percentage reductions bigger. Let's compare two damage reducing methods with this in mind to see how they work. Here's the starting formula. This gives us a final damage taken of 445.5 or a 55.45% reduction in damage from the 1000 base damage. 
Now, if we increase our armor to the cap so that our armor is reducing our damage taken by 50% instead of 45%, you know, a 5% increase in damage reduction according to the armor formula, and leaving everything else equal, this is what it looks like. Now, it's 405 damage taken, or a 59.5% reduction from the 1000 base damage. In the third example, we're going to add Minor Protection, which is a 5% damage reduction buff without increasing our armor. So, damage taken is going to be 423.225, or a 57.6775 damage reduction from base. Without even comparing the percentage reductions from the starting damage taken result, we can see that adding 5% mitigation through our armor provided more damage reduction than adding 5% mitigation through Minor Protection. In comparative terms, the damage reduction percentage differences are actually even more dramatic. When actually playing the game, we do not have access to the original hit values from a given enemy attack. So the only hit we need to compare to was the previous hit. How do I take that previous hit and make it a lot lower so that the next time it doesn't kill me? This means that the number we care about reducing from is 445.5 in this example, in which case capping out our armor value gives us 9.1% damage reduction from 445. And Minor Protection only gave us a 5% reduction from 445. Okay, so with the geeking out done, how does this actually apply to the Archive? Well, the Archive has two things. Enemies that hit like a drunk Lightning McQueen on NOS and visions that give us a lot of percentage reductions. We need to be tanky, like very, very tanky to eat those hits from ads and from bosses alike. With a normal solo build sitting at like 18 to 22,000 armor, you're going to be getting almost one shot or one shot by Marauders almost immediately. We have access to percentage reductions, but we need to get as much damage reduction as possible. If the math we just looked at is correct, that means we need as much armor as we can find. My Arcane Archer here solves this problem in a few ways. The first is the Lady Mundus, which is a very cheap way of giving yourself more armor as it doesn't require resources or transmute crystals. Second is the Crafted Set Torx Pact, which is pulling a lot of weight on the setup. Crafted Torx Pact gives us about 3000 extra armor and the ability to run a single heavy reinforced chest piece for a bunch of extra armor we wouldn't have in a medium armor setup. The last thing is of course, Resolving Vigor affectionately known as Green Vigor, which gives minor resolve, another about 3k armor. Combined, these three things, alongside the classic major resolve from Oakensoul, puts me at around 30k armor. There is solid room for growth here, like 8%-ish damage reduction from where I'm currently at, but I need to farm out the transmutes for a pirate skeleton monster set, or the protective traits from my jewelry to get closer to the cap. But suffice it to say, you can get even tankier than what I'm using here. The second big problem is that the fun in the archive is often very, very determined by which visions you get. On my other build for the archive, the Maximum Effort Warden, we rely entirely on a single vision to pump up the damage and make the build feel good. When you get focused efforts on that setup, wow does the build pop off. But when you don't, ugh, the archive is a slog. On this build, I'm trying my best to mitigate that by making a few more visions super beneficial to the build, so here's how we're going to do that. First, we're going to use pets. The Sorcerer is the quintessential pet class in ESO, the Sorcerer's best ultimate is a pet, and they have a pet named Chad with a taunt and a burst heal for you. It's fantastic. These pets are perfect for the archive because they can take hits for you by drawing enemy aggro. Even bosses will sometimes target them, which is incredible because outside of the archive, Bosses don't, aside from world bosses, but they can also do damage, and more importantly, they can be buffed up by a substantial amount with a vision that increases their damage by 20 to 25% per stack. A few of these will make your ultimate, Charged Atronach, hit like a monster, and will make your Chad Fear do a respectable amount of damage while eating attacks for breakfast. It's great. We can also use focused efforts, thanks to Snipe's beautiful ability to be morphed mid-run into Lethal Arrow, which is a guaranteed poison status effect. Take that already strong snipe spam and turn it up to 11 with 200 to 500% extra status effect damage, which again can stack up to like 2500%. Until you get that focused efforts though, it's probably better to just use focused aim for the increased penetration and better sustain. Oh, you're using Torx Pact and you want enchant effectiveness? Ooh, this one feels good. With a Torx Pact infused bow with a damage shield glyph on, 
you can get shields up to something like 20k in strength every three seconds, making you exceptionally tanky. Just one of these visions adds an incredible amount of survivability to the build without cheesing the arena to reduce boss damage to zero. Oh, you want, you want buff duration? Well, get buff duration. You can make critical surge last a year. You can make your roll dodge major expedition last a long time, and you can kite enemies like you are the hurricane. Single target heal duration. Make your green vigor evergreen. Ferocious support? Well, bow heavy attacks already get an extra 25% damage on top of empower from open soul when you have eagle eye stacked up, so your heavy attacks feel even better to use. They hit basically as hard as a snipe already, and ferocious support just makes that even better. Increased critical damage on physical attacks? You're a bow build! You have solid crit chance on a build, even without sets giving you any crit chance at all, which is very nice. And more. Basically, for being a one bar build, this setup makes excellent use out of a much larger number of visions than my warden build, which feels a lot more fun for me to play. This build is a blast. Now, there is one final thing I want to talk about here, and it is the problem of the Marauders. Marauders are the bane of my existence in the Archive, alongside those little mirror puke blobs that channel their hell spawn at you and ruin your life. Marauders, especially the Fireboy, hit incredibly hard at just Arc 2, and they only get worse. The best way to mitigate their damage is to kite them, and this build really can kite. We have easy access to Major and Minor Expedition as a sorcerer with a bow equipped, so you can absolutely zoom around to outrun the Marauders, especially once you have the Archive Movement Speed buff. But I will warn you, kiting is the high skill ceiling way to deal with the Marauders, and they can definitely still end your run especially because Snipe reduces your movement speed when using it. I still struggle to kite the Marauders, so I haven't made it farther than Arc 5 on this build yet, but I expect some of you more skilled players here can take this build well beyond me. I'm looking forward to comments about your successes with this build. And I guess there's like one more thing, the build also requires light attack weaving and is super single target heavy. Sorry about that, there's only so much that fits onto one bar and the build hurts my hands too. Take some leave, take some breaks, stretch your hands, and commiserate with me in the comments that we can't just use Toxic Barrage as an Arcanist Beam like spammable on bow builds, and also that there's no freaking save point in the archive. All right, if you have any questions about the build, feel free to join my Discord linked in the description. I've got chats about all three games that I make content on, Baldur's Gate, RuneScape, and ESO, and would love to see you over there. Until then, I'll see you all in the next excuse. Oh, hey, look, I used this build to complete hard mode Falkreath Hold, and you can check that video out on the screen now.